<laughs> yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. All right, welcome back to a new video. The plan, as far as I have one, is to build the frame out of aluminum square profiles to keep it lightweight. And use the same electric motors as we did on the electric hovercraft, 35 kilograms of thrust each. Paired with two ginormous carbon fiber propellers, mildly horrifying. And all of this is powered from lithium polymer batteries. I have a bunch of these. And this entire project, I guess, is fueled from this shot and this shot only. We go a big one. Off the ground, on the floor. There we go. On the surface of the moon, a full grown adult would weigh as much as a typical four year old, and you would be able to jump three meters or 10 feet high up in the air. Ironically, there is no air, but still, you would beat any NBA player. And that's exactly what I want to accomplish with this project, a contraption that lets you modify the thrust generated by the motors to simulate your weight on different moons and planets. So on Mercury and Mars, it would be a really slim Simon because I only weigh 35 kilograms. So we would have to set up the motors to lift so that my weight equals 35 kilograms. So that would put me in the state where it feels like I could walk on Mars. That would be pretty much insane. The question right now is how much clearance do we need? These are two meter aluminum square profiles and for the propellers to spin, the clearance needs to be set. I think 1.5 meters, that's it. What we need is a bolt to go through the aluminium and the 3D printed motor mount, but you know, that's quite a thickness. So we're cutting up some threaded rods to act as cheap bolts. The entire construction of this will be remarkably simple. All I have done is I've drilled holes through the aluminium that will hold the piece of plastic that I depend my life on with the threaded rods with an end nut that I just cut and we'll take that through the aluminium and the plastic to hold it in place. The motor goes on top, that's it. We'll do the same for the other side then we'll make some kind of aluminum construction to protect me and as well as holding me to the uh, motors and this entire contraption. So we got the two motors, but now we have all these wires that I'm gonna try to route through the aluminum and out. We'll see how that goes. All right, plastic motor mounts, not gonna work. Not gonna deal with it. I don't have a 3D printer large enough to make the width of me that's the issue, because you see, when I have this on me, you know, something like this, this will have to be wide enough so that aluminum profiles can go vertically down and uh, hopefully make some kind of shell, a safety box, if you will, around me. That's the idea, and I made the 3D printed mounts way too narrow. So we have some plywood instead, 21 millimeter, should be good enough, huh? So my thinking here was to make it wide enough so that I could build a safety cell below the propellers. In hindsight, this could have been made so much easier, even with less material, you know, less weight, but more about that later in the video. <laughs> Holy shit! But now we'll take some more aluminium, add the vertical mount so that we can attach it to my body and also build a safety box with plywood or we might use something else in order to make it semi-safe. So that's coming up next. And it just so happens that these aluminum pipes are two meters tall and so we could just cut them in half and that should be a pretty good distance for, for the vertical aluminum pipes to go down. It should reach about my waist, which should make it easier to make some kind of strap to hold this entire contraption to my body. That's the idea. Dude, I did, that, I did that with the angle grinder and it took like 10 minutes. It was just biting. I guess I have the wrong disc. But man, the saw sometimes, not too bad. Now this will be the volume of the said safety cell, you know, as safe as I can be. 
but you can tell that there is quite a bit of overlap. If we put a propeller in place, you can see that the propeller is overlapping a lot with the safety cell. I hope that's not gonna cause too much of an issue. It All right, finally time to do the vertical posts. Now, a good tip is to have end nuts at home. That way with threaded rods, you can make any sized bolt any length. Because if you have these ordinary nuts, you kind of have to drive in each side simultaneously. Well, not simultaneously, but equally. So you have to kind of take this side a little, then the other side to kind of meet in the middle. If you have an end nut, you can just drive it in all the way. You'll see it right now. Uh, let, me, let me show you. A threaded rod with an end nut. Don't forget the washer. There you go. A very specific length of bolt that I needed and I don't want to go to the store and buy a dozen so, you know, I can manufacture them at home basically. That's pretty nifty. So at this point, I could go to the store to check up on ultra high impact strength materials. Turns out almost all of them are really expensive and also really heavy. Now, just to be clear, that's the kind of motion we don't want. So having some polycarbonate sheets hanging in front on the sides overhead wouldn't be too bad. Now, a couple of issues with that, it's really expensive. But not only that, it's also really heavy. Also, it blocks a lot of the propeller. Now, in hindsight, obviously I could have made this way longer, so wider, and so that would... We are already at 10, at 11 kilograms. Now, if this weighs 20 kilograms, it will add up to 95 kilograms with me hanging on to it. Now, that means that we only have, given that some of the propellers are also blocked, about 50 kilograms of thrust, which means I only weigh 45 kilograms, which doesn't which doesn't even take us to Mars. And that's the issue I'm having. But now when I think about it, I think Mythbusters made some kind of similar machine to this and they had ducted guards in the propellers. I I'm literally coming up with this as I'm recording right now. I want lift off this time. Round two. Could that indeed be something? I don't know. I got it. I got a new plan. What if we had the propellers of death not so close to my head? Well, we could use the full length of this lightweight aluminium to have me as a pendulum and the motors far, far up in the sky, so far out of my reach that it poses no danger. This proved to be a terrible idea, as you will see in about 10 seconds, but this clip is pretty telling. I mean, if this doesn't work out, it would be a badass drone. Uh, no, no, no! New plan, all right, new plan. All right, new plan. Cutting off the legs, making a safety box using XPS foam. We might do some glass fibering with some polyester just to increase the hardness. Thought I would spin up the motors to make sure they work. After all, they have been through all this. A voltage regulator on the mains lead. I'll bump that up to about 20 volts later on. A battery going to a BEC and a modified servo tester. And the servo tester is going to throttle. And I think that's gonna be the easiest way for me to hold on to all of this, simultaneously giving throttle. Let's go. That's not good. All right, I see what's, I see what's going on. The power supply just can't supply the power. It works. First ever weld for Simon. Can't wait to get roasted in the comments. 
At this point, I'd still not figured out how to solve the safety issue, but I decided to route the wires inside the aluminium, which worked pretty well. It works. All right, this is it. I know I've said it about 37 times in this video, but this is it. We're building a guidance system. So basically, I have three connections, one here and one to each side, where a steel wire will guide this entire rig to only move up and down. It will not be able to tilt or move side to side, and that's gonna make it completely safe. Now, that rig, well, that mounting system is gonna have to be pretty legit, so let's get building, I guess. So I got started digging three holes, one for each concrete pier, deck footing, whatever you want to call them. The chickens were obviously there to help. Now that's, that's the part we'll bring in and out in order to take this up and down from the wires that will be on each post to keep it in place. That's the idea. Holy shit. Pretty quick, the tower took shape. If I were to do it all over again, I would have skipped the top base and instead reinforced the posts from the ground so that way the propellers, well, it wouldn't have anything to hit. A big brain move, maybe. I'm not gonna have any of the batteries on myself or on the drone. Instead, I'm gonna keep them on the ground. It's the same batteries from the electric boat video. They are 58 volts instead of just, instead of packing a dozen of lithium polymer 6S batteries that would only result in 48 volts. So a lot more power, hopefully. Now, number two, it's now a two-man job. Only way I could hook up for the motors to work was through a RC controller. So now someone else is gonna have to control the throttle while I'm holding on for dear life on the Yes! <laughs> yes! Bro. Look at this smooth startup too. So nice. That ought to be the best sound of your life. You know, these type of jump shots, they're not optimal to be outside. You can see stuff move in the background like the sun. But here we go. Was that good? Look, this was my audience. They were checking me out. Hey, what's up? Sick, we are all done, ready to go. The only thing I've added is a quick disconnect. So we don't have to do it through the connections on the batteries. We have this right here. I can just plug it out real quick if anything were to go wrong. I painted it red. We have the receiver and everything on a wooden piece of wood because uh, I got some interference with the radio control, so hopefully we won't see any issues today. Let's try it with no motors, no nothing, just to see if it works. Then I'll add the propellers, try it. Then I'll add weight to, uh, to the system before I actually go on it, so let's go. The adapter and motor mount are precisely the type of parts that PCBWay can make. All you have to do is upload your file and it will provide you with materials to choose from. PCBWay also offers PCB manufacturing, it's in their name, and with their instant quote feature, you will get their pricing up front, which is really appreciated. For the past years, I've mainly used their 3D printing and CNC service, but check out their website in the description below to find out what parts they can make you. All right, it's not able to go any direction. It's really close on this point, so I'll probably add a small piece of wood right here. But that works pretty freaking well, wouldn't you say? I'm testing a few different spots just to make sure that I don't have any RF interruptions. But it doesn't seem like I have. If you didn't know, last winter this happened. Basically, I lost all control and I don't want that to happen again. All right, I think we're safe to put on the propellers and see if it lifts off. All right, all right, from now on, I'll have this on. So the audio might be a little scrambled. Let's go.
No. <laughs> All right, just for reference, that's about 20% throttle. Insane. This was the view from my girlfriend's office. Jeez Louise, that's another solid 20 kilograms right there. All right, we'll count it. I place the scale on the ground and my girlfriend is right there to control the throttle. The all up weight is 90 kilograms. To experience the 38% gravity on Mars, we have to subtract the 15 kilograms of the rig and only account for my weight. And that will put us at 28 kilograms to reach Mars. The level of noise was unreal. And because of that, I didn't think she could hear me. Turns out, she heard me loud and clear. Vi var på 30 kilo. Vi, hur mycket gas var det? Jag skulle säga kanske 70. 70 procent. Problemet för mig är att det känns som att jag ska slå i, men jag kanske är långt ifrån. That's it. Yeah. That was top five coolest experience. Terrifying? Yes. And couldn't you just achieve the exact same thing that would be way safer, no noise, and way better with bungee cords? Check this side-by-side -side comparison. It's actually pretty good. And it really felt like I was way lighter on my feet, clearly by the footage, and uh, it was actually truly an awesome experience. Thank you very much for watching. Leave a like. That's the only way I know if you like the video or not. And I really do appreciate it. It makes my day to see all the likes. Now, have an awesome day and I'll uh, see you again very soon. All right. Bye. And once again, I'm going all the way to the camera.